guys and welcome back to another video. So today's video is one that I am so excited to be working on because it feels like I've been gone for an age. I have actually been gone for about five days I think at a convention and actually mostly driving to the convention but I am back and I'm excited to be doing more videos and for this video I'm actually going to be talking about both the pieces that I'm working on as well as my convention experience and the things that I've learned and all of that because it was really exciting and really fun and the pieces that I'm working on today or in this video are actually ones that I created specifically to bring to the convention to sell at my table so there's kind of that connection there but a little bit about the pieces themselves I wanted to do them in a circular format I had that image in my mind when I was thinking about what I wanted to produce for my table and the benefit of it being a circle is that it can have very different compositions or a different way that it lays out when it's rectangular and square there's those corners you have to worry about but when it has more of a circular shape I can have something that feels much more encompassed and held together so for these I decided I wanted to do this skull motif and by having these really rounded edges it mirrored the shape of the skull where it came in and it just it matched it a little bit more and I really love the look of that when I have the uh, the canvas that's helping reinforce the subject matter itself so I knew that I wanted to have rounded canvases and these ones are actually just wooden medallions they're really easy to find and super super cheap I actually ended up using two different kinds I used these ovular ones that I got from Walmart and they're a little bit thicker than the other ones I use and they do have a bevel and then I also got a pack of like six I think from Hobby Lobby of these circle ones and they do not have a bevel and they're just completely circular but it was exactly what I wanted because I did want to try painting on wood because I, I like that look of building up on top of it and it's nice and hard and thick right off the bat so I knew that that's what I wanted and I knew I wanted to do acrylic and the benefit of the acrylic is that it's a lot less uh, tedious I guess as far as the setup when I'm doing say a watercolor I have to make sure that the sketch is very carefully planned and then the line work is very carefully done and I love that but I actually started working on these and I got the idea of having these on my table like two days before I left so I did not have a lot of time and I had a lot of other things to do as well so I chose to do acrylic on these boards because I hoped at least that they would be very impactful and colorful and that they would also be able to be ones that I could produce relatively quickly and enjoy doing it, not get too bogged down by needing it to be exactly perfect because with acrylic you can fix a lot of things. But there were a lot of things that I learned in these pieces working on the acrylic, which is really exciting because I want to start doing a lot more of them. It was really fun to work on it. And I find that it's a lot more like instantly gratifying compared to watercolors and I can get my hands dirty and just really enjoy the process in a little bit more of an enjoyable way than uh, traditional or not traditional digital pieces. So I feel like this is really filling a void in my artistic lineup of what tools I'm using. But uh, yeah, so the paint that I'm actually using is is Liquitex Heavy Body Acrylic. Also, sorry if I look really out of it. I will. I've been driving for like 15 hours yesterday, which I will talk about more of. But uh, most of the paint that I'm using is this Liquitex Heavy Body. And I actually got a little set of a bunch of these little tiny, really vibrant paint colors and they're gorgeous. And I almost exclusively used the like neon colors that, or yeah, the really bright colors that came in that set and a white. So this is mostly what I'm using. And then the white that I used was the Grumbacher. I don't even know how to say that. Grumbacher Academy, which I actually used the white one of this, but those are the paints that I'm using. And I also used a bunch of this. It's slow dry medium and it's by Liquitex. So you add this into your paint and you mix it up and it does exactly what the name says. It slows it down so you're able to really get in there and blend in two different colors and it stays wet and workable for hours, which is amazing for acrylics. But um, when I was working on these, since I had a very limited time frame to get them done, this was not really the right choice. I love the finish of this because it gives it a very glossy look, which is similar to oil painting. So I think that it really does elevate the final look of the piece. I love working with this. I love the final look of it, but it took hours for this to dry down when I wanted to work on 
the next layer because I did the backgrounds and then I was ready to work on the next layer, but it was tacky for so long. So I had to wait a lot longer. And I did another piece where I decided to not use the slow dry because of that reason. And the background dried in like 10 minutes flat. It was so fast. And I did actually end up trying to use my heat gun to see if it would help dry this down. And it might have worked, but it started doing this like bubbling thing. And I got really nervous that it was going to do things that I didn't like. And I think that a hairdryer will work uh, better for this kind of a thing because it doesn't get so hot. So that may be the difference between why a hairdryer works and my heat gun doesn't is that the heat gun cooks it, whereas a hairdryer is warm, but it mostly is just blowing air at it to dry it out. So that's one thing that I probably won't do more of is trying to use that heat gun on my acrylic. But I did learn that. And another thing that also was really exciting to learn is that uh, you can use alcohol to clean up certain layers of your acrylic painting. So in the green one that I'm working on, he has teeth that I painted in there and I didn't sketch those in, which was my first biggest mistake is that I put those too low. So because the skull was starting lower in the oval and then I put those teeth too low, it looked off center and it looked really unbalanced. But if I were to just paint over that last tooth, it would not blend in with the gradient background behind it. And you'd be able to see that outline of the shape itself because the paint has thickness to it. So I actually went in with this alcohol and I very carefully with a Q-tip dabbed it like right on the tooth and I was able to work off that top layer because the alcohol will eat away at the acrylic. So that's the great thing is that I was able to pick that up and then I did go back in with kind of a glazing layer where I just very carefully put back in a little bit more of that blue purple just to bring it back and smooth it out a little bit more. And it was so seamless. I was surprised at how well that worked because it really, you couldn't even tell anymore. It looked like it had disappeared. And then I was able to move that tooth above the other two. That way it balanced out the composition and everything. And the final thing that I'm using in this piece is actually something that I'm really, really excited about and surprised about. But um, I was looking at the little craft section at Walmart and I was just looking for something that would be able to create a... Um, an acrylic line work so I wanted something that would be kind of like a paint pen and I think that Montana there's there's a nicer brand of like paint pens that you can get that'll paint in acrylic and that's the one that I was thinking about looking and finding but I saw this one at Walmart and it was $1.77 and it just says painters and it's an acrylic pen and I decided to get it. This was actually like the very last one on the whole display and it happened to be black, which was perfect. And it's an ultra fine tip. And the biggest problem is that it leaks everywhere. You can see on the end, there's a ton of extra ink. So I usually, when I open this, I have to like wipe it off and make sure that there's not too much ink that is about to come down. But this stuff is awesome. I was so blown away with it because it does say that it's like, that it is opaque, but it was just so cheap and so like, brandless almost that I wasn't sure if I'd be able to like believe that it was going to be that opaque but this stuff was black it was like super 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 black and it was so cheap and it was so easy to work with and I loved it so that is really awesome because it is a great way that I can put the line work back into uh, my acrylic paintings because the line work is like it is the core of how I like to create my pieces. So being able to find something that I can still include it in this new medium that I'm trying out was really awesome. And being able to add that graphic element to this piece just really pushed it to the point where it was felt good and complete and it felt like my work. So this is something that I'm really excited about. I probably will still get the, um, the other nicer brands of paint pens at some point, but this one is just so great that I don't know. I, I didn't feel like I was really lacking in things that I wanted out of it. Uh, one thing though that I did mess up with this a lot is that because the paint comes out like when you push it in, like the nib, if you were to push it in, it would retract into it. It has kind of a lot of like backwards give and take. It just, it feels kind of like it's a spring-loaded nib almost. And there were a few times where I would drag it in the wrong direction and it would like snag a little bit on the wood or something. And then it would make the nib flick and it would flick lots of little dots of ink or of the paint onto my piece. So there were a few areas where that happened and then I had to go in and add more dots so it looked intentional. So I, I started to get the hang of how to make sure that I wasn't gonna 
flick the nib too much and that really happens when i go like side to side when i follow the shape of the nib like up and down that didn't happen it was only when i was like pushing it sideways so i'm learning how to use this tool but i think it'll be really cool to do a lot more of this and to try out a more sketchy look with the line work in my acrylic paintings and if you're curious about any of the tools that I'm using, I'll have links to everything down in the description. So all the paints and everything, you can check that out. Uh, but a little bit about the convention, I just wanted to talk very quickly about my experience because it was really a very overall, very positive experience. This is my first convention and I went to CTN, which is an animation convention. So everyone there was an artist and that was what made it really cool for first experiences that I was able to put up my work and have people walk by and we were able to talk about our own artwork, the things that they loved in mine and the things that we had similar uh, interests in as far as like the subject matter and the color palettes. And it was just really rewarding to be able to talk to other artists about the things that they liked about my work, but also to be able to see their work because I did end up seeing a lot of portfolios and sketchbooks and websites and it was really awesome to make those connections with other artists and to learn what things people like and what things I like of other stuff and it was just it was great to be able to do that in real person form because I love talking about art I talk to a camera pretty much every day about art I talk to you guys in the comments and it is one of my favorite parts about what I do is being able to talk about it and learn more about art so that was really awesome overall it was just a great experience to be able to get out there but the like the pinnacle of the most amazing experiences was being able to meet a couple of you guys so people who knew me from youtube and recognized my name and they came over and said hi it was i cannot tell you how absolutely exciting and motivating of an experience that was it was so phenomenal to be able to meet you guys and talk and meet and just know each other in a very personal form so that we we knew each other and we had that cool connection on the internet and then to be able to turn that into a real person friendship and it was just it meant a lot to me so if any of you guys are watching that came by and said hi to me i just want to thank you guys again because it, it really did mean the world to me and if there's any new people who i met at the convention and they're now watching this i just want to say that is awesome and welcome and that's really cool and for everyone else who's been watching for forever and haven't been at the convention i just want to say thanks to you guys too for all the support i just i feel really grateful and thankful to all of the support that i've received over over this time where I've been trying to get my work out there. So all I can say is thank you guys so much. And uh, yeah, that is pretty much it what I want to say about it. I will absolutely be doing a lot more conventions because I did love it. And this green piece actually already sold at the convention. So the purple one is still available. So if you wanted to own an original of mine, she is available at the link right down in the corner of my video and down in the description. And I'll also actually have a lot more like pins and prints and different size prints that will be available because I got them all produced and ready for the convention. So I'll have them available on my shop within the next couple of days, but the original is available now. So you can check her out and yeah, that is pretty much it for today. I will be getting right back into my uploading schedule and I'm diving right into Twitch. So I'm going to start really figuring out how to stream and what days I want to stream. So that'll be happening very quickly. It's my next priority. Anyways, that is everything for today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys on my next video.